Welcome to Finding Holiness, where we delve into timeless Torah wisdom, revealing the sacred in everyday moments. Join us on a journey to elevate your spirituality and discover holiness in every aspect of life. I'm your host, Rabbi David Kadosh, and together, let's embark on a path of spiritual exploration. I hope you enjoy this next episode. There's a hidden message that often isn't seen or felt when we get to this fast. On the 17th of Tammuz, the feeling of the destruction hasn't set in. The Bet HaMikdash is not yet burned, but still we are told to fast and mourn. The question is why? The answer is based on the realm of what comes before, that there are signs and hints about things that will transpire but haven't yet. Let me explain. After we saw the destruction, it's possible to cry. It's possible to mourn and to pray and to strengthen ourselves with mitzvot and good deeds and hope that through those actions we will merit the third temple. But the moment before the destruction, the prior, is extremely important because at that time it's still possible to prevent a tragedy. Today is no different. Think about it. Iran is a huge threat to the Jewish people. Palestinians are ramming their cars and stabbing people in the street. Anti-Semitism is still rampant around the world. What does this tell me? On one hand, I can say, Hakol bidei shamayim. Everything is in the hands of heaven. What do I care what the Arab is saying, or threatening, or preparing? It's all in God's hands. What do I need to do? Imagine two people are playing chess with each other. Two friends come near them. They don't want to play. They just want to watch. They're literally standing right next to them. If more people come to watch, they can make a little circle around the two players. But it comes to a point that if there are too many people that come to watch, it's impossible to stand around and see what the players are doing. So what do they do? They set up a screen and a camera. Now they can sit in the coffee shop drinking their latte and watch the chess match on the big screen. They can see every move and dissect it as if they were playing. Everyone can see without pushing or shoving. The biggest game on earth, called life, is actually being played above. The contestants are the angel of Esav, the angel of Yishmael, and the angel of Yisrael. Each of them are fighting with each other in heaven. This game is faithful for us here on earth. But how do we know what's going on up there? In the olden days, when the Jews merited, there was prophecy. Through their connection with Hashem, the prophets were able to inform us what we were doing wrong, how we were sinning, and when Hashem was angry. Today, there is no prophecy. In order to know what's happening up in heaven, we have to preface the cure to the illness. We pray and repent, and then Hashem sends us signs that the Iranians are enriching uranium to produce atomic bombs, that anti-Semitism is widespread and the attacks are happening, that there are terror organizations spreading across the globe. These are the signs to know that Hashem isn't happy. These are our signs of prophecy. We need to record these signals and act on them before it's too late. The Talmud tells us that Rabbi Tzadok would fast and pray for 40 years in order that the destruction would not come. He didn't wait to see the bad signs. He started praying from the onset, well before the Chuban. This is the message of Shiva Asar Betamuz. Best to pray and fast before the real travesty occurs, rather than after it happens. There are those who remember to pray for their children, only after they get smacked in the face with reality. There are those who remember to pray for their shalom bayit, only when the plates are flying across the room. There are those who remember to pray for their parnasa, only after they can't keep up. Hachacham enav berosho. The wise person has his eyes in his head. The wise person looks ahead. He has his eyes gazing at what is to come. Better to pray before you get sick, because once a person becomes ill, it's much harder to get rid of the decree. Let us hope that the tefillot and the fasting of today will remind us of this vital lesson. Don't wait until the end. Use these moments to prevent what's to come. And may Hashem, in His good will, cancel out this year's end based on our prayers and acts now in the beginning.